Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life where we are talking all things true crime. If you are brand new and stopping by for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy the video today and appreciate the case coverage. It is definitely one of the more important ones that we have covered on this channel. And for all of my returning 10 to Lifers, welcome back. I am so happy to have you guys here with me today. Today's case, as I mentioned, is one of the more important ones that we have talked about here. It's one that, you know, is unfortunately a tragedy, of course, but it's one that I believe just needs a lot of awareness because there are so many people struggling in secret with very similar circumstances here. And we want to make sure that we generate awareness so that before a tragedy unfolds like this case, we can hopefully educate people well enough to, you know, curb that, hinder that, avoid it. And it is a case of love, manipulation, lies, betrayal, control. It is just jam-packed with all of that and really, really tragic. So guys, let's jump right in. Sent to Life with Annie Elise starts right now. We are taking a quick break in today's case to have a word from our sponsor. As you guys can see, I am coming to you from my brand new studio and I am absolutely obsessed with it. But as you know, a new studio means new expenses. And at first, I was pretty overwhelmed. But luckily, Rocket Money had my back and made me feel much better about the extra spending that it really took to make this possible. Rocket Money was previously called Truebill, and it's a service that I've shared with you before. Truebill has now grown from a bill management app to a full-on personal finance empowerment tool that helps 3.4 million members with budgeting, lowering bills, canceling subscriptions, saving money, and so much more. So a la Rocket Money enters the chat. Rocket Money is everything that I loved about Truebill, but with a fresh new look and feel. So as I've been revamping my studio, it of course came with extra costs. And with extra money going out the door, I knew that I needed to recoup those losses somehow. But how you may wonder, because we all know that money doesn't just fall out of the sky or grow on trees despite us desperately wanting it to. Well, Rocket Money helped me lower my monthly bills and cancel unwanted subscriptions that I forgot I even had. So the savings that I had, thanks to them, was able to directly go into my studio. All I had to do was tap, tap, tap away. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies reoccurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you with just, you got it, a tap. Then by simply uploading a photo of a bill, Rocket Money can negotiate that bill for you with just a single, you guessed it, tap of a button. They will negotiate internet service bills, cell phone bills, cable bills. It's just absolutely amazing, especially for somebody like me who does not do well with confrontation. So not only was I able to seamlessly and easily save money thanks to Rocket Money, but I was able to use those savings to revamp the studio that you are seeing right now behind me. To try it out for free and unlock even more features with premium, head to rocketmoney.com slash 10 to life or click the link in the video description. Thank you Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video and for always having my back with my finances and an ultra big thank you for helping me execute my new studio. And thank you to all of you viewers for understanding that sponsors are essential to the channel if we want to grow it to a place where I can deliver you more true crime all the time. Now let's jump back into today's case. Sonia Khan is a beautiful 29-year-old woman and native to the small mountain town of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Sonia was a very stunning and creative individual. She was also the child of Pakistani immigrants who started her career as a social worker and advocate for low-income families. She later worked as a flight attendant to support her career as an aspiring photographer. She turned her passion into a paycheck by forging her career as a lifestyle photographer, immortalizing the high points of life, weddings, maternity shoots, baby showers, and all other major milestones. And all who visited her website are greeted with the assurance of a cover photo in her About Me section that read in capital neon letters, you are exactly where you need to be. Scrolling down reveals a portrait of the stunning, dark-haired Sonia wearing a very warm smile. And she writes, My life truly began the day I purchased my first DSLR. I wouldn't know it at the time, but it would forever change me. 
She went on to say that she puts every piece of herself into the photos that she captures and that if you're looking for a budget photographer, she's not the one you want. And it's evident from the gallery work on her website just how much effort she put into the process. The kind of energy that goes beyond a single day behind the lens to capture memories that will be lived 1,000 times over. She volunteered some personal information on her website as well, like that coffee doesn't do much for her, so she prefers tea, and also how she used to love to travel so much that that's the reason she became a flight attendant. During her travels, her favorite layover was always Chicago, and she says, who would have known two years later I would have moved there. Sonia and 36-year-old Raheel Ahmad married in 2021. They had a big, fabulous Pakistani wedding. I can't talk right now. I'm doing hot girl shit. And things seem to be beautiful from the outside. A gorgeous wedding, two newlyweds, marriage bliss, what could go wrong? Well, the happy marriage that Sonia wished for and thought that she was in was apparently built on a foundation of lies and manipulation. To start, he told her he was 30, but in reality, he was actually 36. And according to friends, Sana's new husband, Raheel, had long-standing mental health issues. Not only that, but Sina and Raheel's incompatibility had been somewhat masked by the fact that they were in a long-distance relationship before they ever got married. Then, once they got married, all of the issues and opposing views came to light. Raheel also became very possessive. He monitored what she wore, he worried about who she hung out with, how she presented herself, who she talked to, I mean, everything. And this jolted friends of Sanaa's because according to them, they didn't see someone as spirited as her being so manipulated or controlled by someone, but she was. And during their marriage, Sonia had become the doting wife. She cooked for him and brought him food while he studied. She transformed and was trying to make herself into this homemaker, cooking all of his meals and now dressing modestly. Her personality seemed diminished while she was married to him and was apparently very different compared to her previous bold, bright, and energetic self. This went on for months and finally Sonia confided to friends that she felt unsafe and that her new husband was suffering from mental health crises. She also was second guessing herself and questioned to friends about whether it was right to marry him or not. Sonia continued to confide in her friends and discuss the struggles in her marriage telling them that her husband wasn't sleeping and often acted strangely, that he was also refusing her pleas to seek help or even go to therapy, and that she felt his mental health struggles had now become her burden. With so much pain and fear, many friends were advising Sonia to leave the marriage. However, apparently, some actually counseled her to stay in it. And it wasn't just some of Sonia's friends who were encouraging her to stay in the marriage, her family and community were also pushing her to stay. But in December of 2021, Sonia knew something was not right. So despite the blowback that she knew she was going to receive from some of the closest people in her life, she decided to separate herself from Raheel and to take the necessary steps forward to divorce him. Sonia was shunned by her community when she was trying to obtain a divorce, with some family members saying that her actions would let the devil win, and others even threatening to take their own life over it. I mean, talk about a guilt trip. On what planet is it okay to try and control somebody else's actions and decisions so much so that you literally threaten to take your own life if they don't make the decision that you want them to make? Regardless, she was ready to be free. This situation empowered Sonia. She wanted to be vocal about her struggles and cast a bright light on the situation so that other women who may be experiencing something similar know that they're not alone. And she began sharing her story on TikTok, describing her as the black sheep in her community. She started chronicling her tumultuous divorce on TikTok and all about venturing out on her own and what her plan was now that she was going to be independent. Those who were consuming her content regularly grew to love her and how bold she was for speaking out. And after a short while, she amassed a following of over 20,000. But speaking out so candidly about divorce was a stark contrast to what is deemed to be acceptable or appropriate in her culture. 
As Sonia put it, in her culture, women are always expected to stay silent, and that silence is what keeps them in messed up situations in the first place. And for divorce, it is to not ever be contemplated. It is the woman's duty to keep the family, and a divorce would tear a family apart, and only selfish women would want to do that. So not only are the women in her culture not to even think about divorce, but they certainly are not to talk or present divorce as leading to a happier life. And she was doing this, and she was doing it boldly, speaking out about it online. She also said, going through a divorce as a South Asian woman feels like you failed at life sometimes. The way the community labels you, the lack of emotional support you receive, and the pressure to stay with somebody because of what people will say is isolating. It makes it harder for women to leave marriages that they shouldn't have been in to begin with. And in one of her more emotional and vulnerable posts, she actually says that sometimes when she's sad, she thinks about how proud her younger self would be of the woman she's become. She followed her dreams to be a photographer and now was the most confident that she'd ever been after finally choosing herself over a man. In May of 2022, with the support of her friends, Sonia filed for divorce after being married for less than a year, and she secured an August hearing to finalize the divorce. She also filed a restraining order and changed the locks on her doors. So Raheel moved to another state during the separation and the divorce process. Maybe the next stage of your healing journey is just telling more people to fuck right off. Maybe the next stage of your healing journey is just telling more people to fuck right off. Sonia was excited to finally begin this new chapter. Two months later on July 18th, 2022, despite being uninvited and unannounced, Raheel drove 11 hours from his home in Georgia where he had been staying to her apartment in Chicago to salvage the marriage. After his family found out he was missing from his home, they asked for a welfare check at Sonia's apartment where they thought that he might be. Inside the residence, Chicago police officers found her unresponsive near the front door of the Chicago condo that she, that she had once shared with her estranged husband. She had a gunshot wound to the back of her head and was pronounced dead at the scene. Her estranged husband also had a gunshot wound to the head and was allegedly holding a 9mm Glock handgun and a note was found nearby. He was transported to the hospital where he later died. Tonight, she tried to escape a toxic marriage, moved to Chicago, got a new job and a fresh start. That all ended Monday when police say Sonia Khan's ex found her and killed her in Streeterville. Our Charlie DeMar spoke to people who knew the 29-year-old photographer. He joins us now live from Streeterville. Charlie. The surface of it on paper, Sonia Khan did everything she was supposed to do. She left her marriage. She relocated to a new city. She really was starting a new chapter here in Chicago. But those same experts say the factors of leaving a relationship and also going through a divorce increase the chances of domestic and even death. Like, these are hot. Yeah. Sonia Khan usually expressed herself behind the camera. She was a professional photographer who moved to Chicago last June, but in recent months, I've been going through something. She's been in front of the lens on TikTok, where she's openly documented her divorce from a man she describes as toxic. I don't relate to you, no. Khan also posted about the cultural stigma of divorce in the South Asian community. In one video, she writes, Going through a divorce as a South Asian woman feels like you failed at life sometimes. Monday, Khan was shot and killed inside her Streeterville apartment. Sources say her ex-husband traveled to Chicago from Georgia, shot Khan, and then... Speechless. You know, you, you just, you don't accept it as being is being true. That's probably enough for this one. Khan was the photographer for a high school mock trial team. Justin Matarisi got to know Khan in his role as executive director of the program. Loving, uh, compassionate, energetic, uh, full of life. She made the kids feel special. A friend of Khan's writing on Facebook, my friend was someone who took all the right steps. She left. She had a restraining order. She changed her locks. And it's very tragic because it is she did what she could in her control, and you cannot predict what's going to happen. July 21st, 2022 was supposed to be the day that Sonia left Chicago, left the trauma of a relationship gone wrong, and left her fear behind, leaving all of it behind to begin a new solo chapter, a happier chapter, back in Tennessee. 
but that day and Sonia's freedom would never come. Instead, she left Chicago and headed back to Tennessee in a casket. A lot of help from her friends who supported her throughout this entire ordeal until two weeks ago, when Khan was found dead in her Chicago apartment, shot to death by her ex-husband. Her friend Gabriella was about to join her for, for the trip to Chattanooga uh, when that dreaded phone call came. Uh, and Gabriella Bordeaux uh, joins us now. Thank you so much for being here, Gabriella. I know um, this is still very, very raw and it can't, it can't be easy to talk about um, because I, I know this is, this is one of your best friends. She is, yeah. What was, what was Sonia like? How, how, I mean, she just looks so vibrant in the videos. How would you describe her? She was like a thunderstorm. So powerful and fun and direct and bold and effervescent. She was my mirror and I love her. She's absolutely exquisite and so much fun. Yeah, those are amazing photos of, of the both of you. I know that she was closing out one chapter of her life, at least hoping to end her marriage. Um, and she was gonna move and, and try to get away. And you were actually, you were, you were planning to help her, right? I was, I'm also her roommate. So I went up to see her and bring her home. And how much was she looking forward to it? Oh God, we have so many messages, so many texts, Instagram messages, posts on Instagram. We were ecstatic about it and so excited about it. Um, she was ready to see the mountains again. She told me time and time again, everyone else as well. She's not a city girl. She never was. She was ready to come home. What can you say uh, about the relationship with, with her ex? Uh, I mean, did you ever suspect that, that he could be this violent? I had a feeling, but I don't think I seriously ever suspected anything because I did not have the misfortune or fortune of meeting him in person. I only met him through FaceTime. I didn't understand. I didn't know. Yeah, and she would obviously talk a lot uh, on social media about what was going on. But did she confide in you also about, uh, about him? She did. She told me everything about how they were, how he controlled her, how he tried to manipulate her, or did manipulate her in many ways, socially, personally, how she dressed, who she saw, what she did, what she was doing for her career. So she did confide in me. Um, I wish I'd seen it. Yeah, it sounds like she had a very, very bright future ahead of her. Um, Gabriella, how did you find out what happened? I, I found out, um, I found out on the train. Uh, I had flown up to Chicago to, she'd bought my ticket. I was flying up there to bring her home and I hadn't heard from her all day, but got off the plane and I remember her saying something about the blue line. I have no idea what that means. I've never been to Chicago. So I got on the train and uh, ferociously tried to figure out where her, what her address was. Asked my friends like, hey, have you heard from her? Are my texts coming through? What are we doing? Um, asked her, I called her, no response. And um, I ultimately found out through Instagram and, uh, one of her friends told me, but I didn't really fully uh, accept it until uh, her dad called me in that, like while I was on the phone with the other friend and told me what happened. Oh um, my gosh. And, and you were like on your way there, uh, literally already was, made it to Chicago. Yeah, I was in Chicago on the train, mm -hmm. going to her house, expecting to have a night out with her. Yeah, yeah. What did her dad say? He was very calm, but he, he just told me the detail of the minimum of the details that she'd been shot in her apartment and asked me if I knew anything or if I was there yet or did I have Rahil's number or everyone is still trying to piece things together at that time. But that that was pretty much the entire conversation. Um, her mother called me right afterward and uh, pretty much said the same thing more distraughtly, 
but uh, I still was in shock and disbelief. I was on a train in the middle of a city. Yeah. I had no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't even imagine. Um, I want to read one of the messages that Sonia posted on TikTok, and there are a lot of them. Um, but this one said, going through a divorce as a South Asian woman feels like you failed at life sometimes. The way the community labels you, the lack of emotional support you receive, um, and the pressure to stay with someone because what will people say um, is, is isolating. Um, and you can see some of her messages right there. I mean, the thought that she felt pressured to stay and that it ended this way. It's just such a shame that 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 societal pressure existed. It is a shame and I think it's despicable and just completely crazy that it is even expected of these women especially in their circumstances, especially as vocal as they are, especially having supportive like progressive friends that they have and the direction that they were going. You know, I, I still cannot believe that it was my friend. I still cannot believe it was her out of all people. She was so bold and honest and open about what she was doing and ready to leave. It just, it's absolutely absurd. And I, and I can't imagine other women who are not as fiery and fighting as she is. I can't imagine the, the future that they're expecting or they will meet. Yeah, and, and she was so close. I mean, you were there. You were so close to, to sort of rescuing her in a way. It's just such a shame the way that it ended. Um, Gabriella, thank you so much. I, I know this can't be easy. We really appreciate you coming on tonight. Of course. Happy night. Thanks. Okay, thanks. you got it. Sonia's announcements of her abusive relationship gave thousands of other women just like her hope because she was so courageous and vulnerable. Now, according to statistics, the most dangerous time for those in these kinds of situations is right after the escape. Due to the extreme manipulation, breaking free for good can take an average of seven times. Although her death is a tragedy, Sonia deserves to be remembered for the beauty she created in life, or as she put it, for helping people fall in love with themselves and with each other in front of the camera. Now, not only is this case just devastating because there's absolutely no justice for her and no accountability for what happened because he, Raheel, took the coward's way out, in my opinion, but it's just so angering because she was taking the appropriate steps to pull herself out of this situation and remove herself from this situation and he still felt like he owned her and he still had to have control and if nobody else if he couldn't have her nobody else could and the reason i want to talk about this is because we have seen this happen time and time again where somebody takes somebody else's life and then it takes their own because they aren't you know grown enough or have the balls to face the music for what they've done now this happens, as I said, all the time. So we need to continue to generate awareness so that not only can people look for and identify signs, but so that you can be there as a friend, a family member, some sort of support if somebody you know is going through this. And also so that you can help, you know, aid in their safety, making sure that the other person isn't coming around, that they're taking the legal steps and legal precautions they need to in order to truly separate themselves. It's just such a tragedy that this beautiful 29-year-old woman who had everything going for her and a, such a bright future ahead, who loved other people, it's just such a shame that her life was so senselessly snuffed out because of a possessive, controlling liar who claimed to love her but only loved the idea of her, which is my belief of what the situation was. So please, in honor of Sonia, share this where you can, share the link, spread awareness, leave your well wishes and, you know, condolences for her family below because the only thing we can do now in a situation like this, since justice and accountability can't be had, is to generate awareness and just hope and pray that it doesn't happen to somebody else. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in with me today and until the next one, stay safe. Bye.